All right, so if we, if we have a site that we brought back, uh, we can continue to work on it. And there's still a few menu items we're going to learn about, a few basic ideas. Uh, the first two weeks of the class are what I would say that are the basic to intermediate level of the class. And then the last two weeks are the intermediate plus advanced. Uh, so four weeks in total, eight sessions in total. We're still in the, in the basic aspect of it. We need to learn a few more items here. Uh, let's go over here. We haven't looked at this screen yet. Media. Click on Media. Media is the place where we can hold all of our pictures, our videos, our sound, our PDFs, all of the, all of the multimedia of our site. And in the old days when you were making a website, you had to create a folder structure. You had to manage inside of your site. You had to make folders and call it images and products and manage it. Uh, WordPress, as I said early on, is a CMS, a content management system. So it shields you from all of that. You don't have to make folders. You don't have to make a structure. You just add images. It'll keep track of it for you. So let's see with an example. We'll, we'll upload a couple of images to the project. Uh, I've got a few sample images that you can use. So let's do this. Media library. Click Add New. You can either drop a file in and just about any kind of file, audio, video, etc. Or let's click here, Select. If you've got images on your own flash drive, you're free to use them. But I've got a few that you can borrow. Click Select Files. And on the left side, uh, this side panel here, uh, under uh, Desktop, Libraries, Pictures. We've got some sample pictures that you can borrow. Or if you've got your own on your flash drive, go ahead and grab those. And then in sample pictures, we have several pictures that don't, uh, that don't match up with the content of our site, but it's pictures. You can click on, on one to open, or you can control click, hold control on the keyboard and control click more than one if you want to upload more than one at the same time. So control click lets you select more than one, or a simple click lets you select one, and then you open. I'm going to just grab a few of these, the koala, the penguins, the hydrangeas. You can do all of them if you want, but I'm going to upload a few pieces of media to my site. And then I'll click open. This is going to show here that it's uploading. It's not really uploading to anywhere, any real server or anything, but that would be the procedure when you have this for real on GoDaddy and Bluehost. So I've uploaded two items. I'm or three items. I'm looking at it in terms of thumbnails. If we switch the view here, thumbnails to this list view. Let's see. They call that's the list view. So then you look at it this way. You can get a sense of what is the name of the file, who uploaded it, is it attached to any screen or not, and when. And comments. So you can see it that way as a very visual gallery or as a, a list. And even if you look at it as a gallery, if you go back to the gallery view, if you click on one, then it'll show you details. So see, it shows you the image. There's the file name, penguins.jpg, uploaded today. That's its size. And then there's various things here that I'll address in a moment. Who uploaded it? Uh, with what page is it attached to? And then we got here, delete it. Let's remove it if we don't if we no longer want it on our site. Well, each of these one files is approximately one megabyte. So now our whole site got three megabytes larger or so. And when we do the backup, remember every new thing we add to the site, pictures, products, text, all of that continue uh, contributes to making the site bigger and bigger, and then backups. Eventually, when your site is too big, whatever that means, it gets then a little slow and such. Yes. Um, if we have, if you're saying this is a uh, content management system. If we have a lot of content mm -hmm. that we're not necessarily using, uh, we're just having it up there as reference. Is that slowing down the site? It's slowing down the site in purposes of the backup. Because when we run Duplicator, it has to grab all your files and put them together into one zip. But from day-to-day -day operation of people visiting your site, it shouldn't. 
because people are not accessing those files and it's not being loaded into memory. That sounds perhaps they didn't quite do it in the way this way about using the library. They might have referenced it elsewhere. If you notice right here, this picture is uploaded somewhere into the site. Well, here it is exactly where somewhere. In the URL, it says it's in the local host in that folder, in the WP content folder, in the uploads folder, in the 2018 folder, in the May folder, and there's the file. So. Uh, if I were to look at it via, you know, a, a, a computer window right here, I would follow that uh, path that it's telling me inside of WP content, inside of um, uploads, inside of 2018, inside of 05. There is various versions of the file, penguins and different versions. So in your case, I would, I would have you would have to look. You know, in in the file manager outside of WordPress, perhaps poke around a little bit in the server. If you break anything, it's not my fault, but just <laughs> just look around. But it's it's like on a, on a you know it's in Mexico and you know it's hosted on, yeah. on some other server and stuff. So I mean, I don't think I have any way to check. It's just it's not in the WordPress. It's got to be somewhere on the server. So if you have access to a file manager, you can look around in there. Nothing will happen just browsing files and such. But uh, it should be in there somewhere. Because if it's not in your library, it, it's got to be somewhere in the server. Okay. So um, if you basically, she could have it on an external link, right? It's it could be. Somewhere else, and it's just being linked in. It wouldn't be in your library. Right? It could be that way also, that your images are on another server. And whenever they're visible on your home page or whatever, it's just a link to somewhere on the internet, some address. So one way to try to figure that out is maybe click to edit that page and then click that picture and see what the, the details of the picture are. It might take a little detective work. It could be external, external links. What's cool about the, the media viewer here is we've also got some abilities to do a little bit of image editing. So on one of these pictures that we uploaded, if you'd like, you can, uh, you can click Edit Image. You get some basic features here for editing. Uh, we have here Rotate It. If it's tilted the wrong way, you can, you can easily rotate it. So there it is now. I have it the right way, let's say. Undo. There's an Undo and a Redo. There's Flip It, if that's left to right and, uh, left to right and such. Flip It. Uh, we also have the ability to crop. Now, this one is not very intuitive. You have to first draw a little box and then click crop. If you're not used to that icon, that means that's a crop. Oops, that's a crop icon. Um, that icon that says, well, I, I can't click on it. Well, it's not intuitive. You have to first draw the box of what you want to keep, and then you can click that, and then it'll crop the picture to only that part. So images can be can be manipulated somewhat from here. It's not as powerful as something like Photoshop or, or photos on the Mac and such. Uh, basic editing here. Yes? Uh, on which, let me undo that. So when I did the um, when I did that, yeah, th this drawing this box here doesn't affect uh, this right away until after I actually crop it and click save. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, if you have a large file that's um, referenced on a page, but the um, but it's not the home page. So when somebody goes to the home page, is, could it impact the load time of the site? It's a huge file on uh, like an about us page. It will only impact them when they visit the about page. 
uh, if they never visit the about page it's not slowing things down because the person's web browser is not requesting the image until they go to the about screen let's make some notes about images Try to only have the images on your in your media library that are being used in your site. Um, more images slow down your site. So more images slow down your site uh, for visitors and backups. Question. Slow down meaning time of Slow down of the pages. If someone's going to Well, I'm getting to that because there there are those use case scenarios that I do need twenty or a hundred pictures. So uh, this is what I have. Uh, make sure you use images that are being used. So obviously you want the pictures that you want people to see. Okay, so then what we need to do about that is uh, remember to optimize your pictures. And that means uh, small uh, dimensions and file size. And I have to put this in quotes, small, because this is going to vary for so many people. People always ask, well, what exactly file size and what exactly dimensions. That's going to uh, vary depending on uh, on the person. If I've got fine art photos that I want to show on my site, I might want big images to see the detail. If I've got many products, uh, I might want smaller images. So just for some general ideas of sizes, so we'll say maximum dimensions on any side, 1920 pixels maximum. So when I say any side, well, pictures are pretty much rectangular or vertical. Yes, of course, there's the square pictures. But vertical, horizontal, right? We've got pictures in portrait or landscape, right? So if it's in landscape, the longest side is the width, 1920 wide. If you've got a portrait, well, then the longest side is the height, the longest side. Because the width, the, the other side, uh, automatically also often scales. When you change the size of, of one, the width, the height will automatically also change. So uh, maximum of 1920. Um, that'll give you a very nice big HD quality size, but then it may be too big. So uh, I would say usually minimum. Uh, 1,024 pixels on any side. So somewhere between those dimensions is a good size. This is small enough that you can see good enough visual quality of the picture um, without having it to be too slow of a download. And that's big enough to see even more quality. Now we have to balance that with, as I said here, file size. Because in digital images, we have the dimensions of the image also, but we have how much, how much it weighs, how much it's space it takes on the server. And we can have something uh, lightweight that downloads quickly, or we can have something heavy that downloads slower. So in terms of um, file sizes, try for below 500 kilobytes. Um, that's at the very high end, so anywhere between you know 100, 500 um, is is a good overall size. Yeah. I'm kind of concerned with uh, cell phones and tablets now. Really getting, they're really pushing their uh, high res on them. Yeah. So you've got to kind of. I've been having trouble with older files, older websites. The pixel, uh, the pictures are really starting to look because they're optimized for the smaller screen. You know, Lower res, mm. they're really starting to get um, pixelated and blurred. Low quality and such. Yeah, so do you have it? Um, I know WordPress has different size images. Could you like tell it to, hey, I want this huge 
for a certain resolution and um, a smaller one for maybe if you have somebody on a, um, still on a 17 inch monitor or something? Well, notice when, uh, when I peeked inside of the media library in the folder, there were several versions of the pictures. So it is already doing it. It is already doing it. Uh, I've uploaded a version. There's the original unedited version. There's the 100 by 100 version. There's a 150, a 300. There's the 1024 version. So WordPress already creates different versions for different, for different sizes. You actually call that out which version you want. It's rather automatic. It, uh, it, it should be smart enough to know which version to use based on the person that visits your site. Tablets versus old phone versus laptop and such. So if you just upload the biggest version of it, that'll break it down. For you. The biggest yeah. with the limit of 1920. If you take it, if you put it in directly from your cell phone at 4,000, that's way overkill. So you still want to upload uh, shrunk down to 1920 uh, maximum, and then it will create the various versions for you for your users. Uh, yes. I'm trying to use uh, use it for a portfolio. Mm -hmm. and the problem is that everyone every thing has a picture plus words, and so it won't the WordPress site won't even take won't even take it because it's because the files are too big. It won't take it when you try to upload it, or, or it won't. So when you're here under Add New, it's too big for this. Right. Um, it says two megabytes, but yeah. I, I just um, and then I tried. Uh, I'll show you a, a, perhaps a, a trick that'll help you in just a moment. Okay. Thank you. Question over here. No, not in raw file. No, I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm gonna talk about it here in the in the lecture actually. Uh, what was that about raw files? Raw files. Yeah, when you take your when you take photos out of a digital camera or a cell phone, they're very very big right out of it. Uh, so this is what I'm about to show here: how to kind of compress it a little bit. Yes. Yeah, I'm just going to say, if anyone has Photoshop, we exporting it to save for web. There's a way to really reduce the file size. You shouldn't really be able. I mean, you, you should be able to have a full width hero image for under. You know, it should be like 75k mm -hmm. and still look great. That's right, but um, for many of us that perhaps don't have Photoshop or don't have that much experience, uh, here's what uh, we're going to mention right here. Um, this website, Pixlr.com, is sort of like the little brother of Photoshop. <laughs> it's like Photoshop Junior. Um, instead of paying uh, the various prices for Photoshop and the other Adobe products, uh, here is pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com, Pixlr. I'll put this in the notes. But this is an online photo editor. You don't have to download anything. You don't have to install anything. It works on Windows or Mac. You just need a web browser. And I think these guys have been around for at least 10 years. I've been recommending them I, I, like since 2007. And um, they're still around. They were eventually bought by, I believe, Autodesk, which is a big name in uh, graphics. And um, it's still around. So well, the purpose of this is uh, a photo editor. Because this picture in the background right here looks big and high quality and very nice. And I bet if we look into in the code, it's, it's a relatively small file size. They've done the job of balancing these two. We have to balance dimensions and file size. Because straight out of your camera, you're going to get big dimensions and big file size. If you uh, optimize your image, you are balancing that between dimensions versus uh, size, and you will be able to get good looking images at a good size, at a good um, dimension and file size. So what you could do here is you've got the express, apply quick fix, creative effects, overlays and such. You've got also the more powerful editor. Just as a very quick way here, if I go to launch web app under express, uh, this seems to say it wants flash. Okay, I will allow that. I'm going to upload a file. So I've got it right here. Adjustments, effects. I can add text and stickers. Adjust, crop, resize. There's a resize. I can go here. Keep proportions, like I said. Um, you change one size, and then the other size changes. So there 
resize it. Maybe the color, I need to increase colors. Make it a penguin party right there. <laughs> Once I like the result, then I can click Save, and that'll download back to my computer with the resize. And then right here, I've also got the, the ability right there. It's saying 129 kilobytes. Even if I put it up here, 689. If I put it way down here, 34. So this percentage of value, okay, at 93%, 200. I'm under my 500. The smaller you get it, the better, because things will download faster, but then you have to balance quality versus size, and that could be just something that you get out of practice. Photoshop is better in showing you before and after. If you set these settings, it'll look this good or this bad. But this Express, for free, is very good. If I go back to the other one, the editor, this one is create an image, load an image, upload an image, and here's where it's much more like Photoshop. I've got menu items like in Photoshop, drawing tools, burning and, 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 and toning and all of that, and even basic layers and all of this complexity and multiple undos and masks. So if you know some Photoshop, this is all here, completely for free. You just have to, you just have to ignore the ads right there, and then it, it works like like Photoshop. And you've even got keyboard shortcuts. I can press B and put in the filter, and then draw, give him some hair, <laughs> like that. Actually, well, let's give him a hat. Actually, Abraham Lincoln hat right there. Top hats, top hats for everyone. Mm -hmm. Well. You know, top hats to match their tuxedos. And then uh, don't forget the little little strip right there. Yep. Yes. Now you got me started, so I've got to give the little got to give the little the little buckle right there. It's got undo and everything. So, yep. And then. Um, Red bow tie. I could do this all day. So, you see here that uh, we've got you know Pixlr. <laughs> we've got Pixlr, and we can do all of this stuff. And the whole point of this digression is that uh, you should be optimizing your images. Getting them right out of your camera is not what you want to do. You want to resize them. You want to have a maximum dimension and think about these uh, file sizes and such. Because the more images you add, the more it slows down your site for when people visit the site and uh, even if you just upload images to have them there as a content management system it's going to slow down your site when you make the backup the duplicator archive has to copy all of those files and all of those versions of the files this one file in my case has uh, six different versions of the one I uploaded I uploaded three images and then I've got 19 images and imagine all the other images that I'm uploading, especially if I upload it huge out of my camera. Yeah. Do you have, is there any preference on uh, file saving between like JPEG or PNG or PST files? Sure. Uh, JPEG, best for most photos. Ping, uh, best for flat graphics like logos, uh, plus transparency. And GIF, the only the only purpose for a GIF nowadays is funny animations. Okay. Stick with JPEGs most of the time if we're dealing with photos. Ping, can PNG ping can save photos, but they're going to be too big. And GIFs are for animations. So short answer, JPEG, and try to keep it under 500. You'll easily be able to do it if you set the right settings, 100 kilobytes or so with good visual quality. Yeah. So you would just export out of your Lightroom or Photoshop as a Yeah. Yep. Photoshop has the save for web feature and then right there you have even more fine-tuned control for visual quality versus file size. Yeah. So with the uh, advance in, in the online data is like uh, going from Five megabits per second was standard five years ago. Now people are getting gigabit speeds throughout San Diego. Mm -hmm. Is that is 
there like a default size to your website? You want to stay below, like a guideline? You want to stay below? Or? No, uh, there's so many factors there because. Uh, yeah, it used to be that we had a, a certain very standard monitor size. We had dial-up at 56K and all of that. And we had parameters that were very well defined. Now with so many different speeds and monitors and all of that, well, yeah, I have you know 100, me 100 megabit download speeds at home, but do I have that on the road under the bridge S on this phone? So um, there's no set standard like it really used to be. That's why we see WordPress is creating different versions of the graphic so uh, we don't really think about how what's the size you know when we used to use Dreamweaver down on the corner it would say this is the size of your whole page and keep it under one megabyte or whatever that's very it's very difficult to do that anymore it's not really necessary to try to shoot for like what's my whole page because there's so many factors of what's the person's speed and screen size is it mobile friendly and all of that so uh, just it's more of a case by case basis of the pictures. Yeah. Isn't there a few um, free uh, sites that will uh, check your load speed or something? Remember, yeah, but that's getting into now the point of like we're we're becoming like much more hardcore web designers and web developers and such, which. That, that is something we, we could get into, but for most of us, we don't need to be that fine, fine grained, fine, uh, that much detail, because we just want to put as easily as possible and as best as we understand it, a good website with the graphics and everything. I'm actually pretty proud of this, so I will save this. <laughs> we don't want to build the car, we want to drive the car. Yes. So, um,. I'm just going to save this. And it even tells you right here, uh, JPEG, good for most photos, ping, transparent, full quality, BMP, uh, not, don't even bother with these other ones. It's just JPEG and ping. TIFF for like special printing formats. And Pixlr has its own version of layers, PXD. So if you're used to Photoshop PSD, this is ping, uh, Pixlr's version. So I'll say that is a... I believe so. If uh, let me go exit over here, there is um, <laughs> web apps install editor express. Um, I have to poke around a little bit. I remember there being a version that you could download and install, and a little bit more pro. Uh, but yeah, there's Photoshop, but then there's also Photoshop Elements. Photoshop Elements is the, from officially from Adobe, is a, is a little bit uh, more consumer-friendly version of Photoshop. Uh, I don't know the current prices, but traditionally Photoshop was like $500. It's different now, but it's, it's still pricey. This one is often around uh, $99. Um, you can even get it on sale a lot, a lot of times for like $79. And uh, I'm sure there's a version there. I think I've seen it, you know, like a $30, $20 version. Uh, but yeah, Photoshop is the gold standard still. Here's a, a, a version that's good. And then Elements is very good too for, for many people. And then also uh, in class, you can, you know, on our computers, you can borrow the software. We've got all the Adobe software in here. During lab times and such, you can use our software. So the media library. Let's look at a couple more things regarding media. Um, very important for SEO, search engine optimization. So we will say here, notes on images. Remember to SEO, or optimize, search engine optimization, search engine optimize your images. That is alt text which is a text based description of your images purpose search engines like Bing, Yahoo, Google love that that your images have alt text how big a description are you talking about? we'll see that in a moment We'll see that in a moment. Okay. Um, also, 
Yes, exactly. So it's the law 508 compliance, also known as ADA. Yep. So Americans with Disabilities Act, Section 508, and uh, local and federal and state laws. Um, government agencies and such are the ones that are beholden to these laws. But it has been proven many times in the courts that also big uh, entities like Walmart and Target and all of them uh, should abide by these things as well. It's For us, serious. what's that? Target got sued. Yes, guy. yes, exactly. For us, not as big as Target, we should be doing that as well because then purpose also, it's the right thing to do. It's for accessibility. It's for helping people. Because this purpose, alt text, a text-based description of your image. Uh, you may be surprised, but people that are completely blind can still browse the web, can still go to websites, can still navigate the internet. You might say, well, it's such a visual medium. How could people that can't see it, how could they possibly navigate? Well, people that have that need have a special computer or software or keyboard or hardware that will read to them what's on the screen. So I can see I've got a menu up here, the dashboard. If I had that need, my computer would read to me or give me some sort of feedback that says menu item dashboard, menu item posts, menu item pages. And then I need to click on pages. Well, if I can't see it, I've got a keyboard that I've memorized and is custom built for me that I can navigate with the keyboard to go to the right menu item like this and then I press my keyboard and then I go in there I'm making a new page I didn't touch the mouse so people have the ability to browse the internet even if they are completely blind uh, when it's text-based and where this whole thing fails is with graphics because the smartest computers at the moment cannot really tell you what a picture is uh, most pictures if uh, this we're trying to be analyzed by the smartest computers in the world, it might be able to tell you penguins, or koala, or a flower. But what if this is a very specific picture of three very specific famous penguins at a famous zoo? It would not be able to tell you the details of the image. What if it's a family photo? It doesn't know who you are at all. It just knows humans in a group but it doesn't know the Campos family reunion 2018 in Paris. It might know the picture of the Eiffel Tower because that's a famous photo, but it doesn't know any other details. So that's where this alt text comes in. If you click on any of your photos here, you see you've got it right here, alt text. So we should be doing alt text for those reasons, for being found by the search engines for being compliant in the law, and for doing the right thing to help people coming to our site. Am I going to turn away a population of people that can't see? Um, if I, all I have to do to help them is write a little bit of text here. If I'm trying to sell products, I want everyone to buy my product. And if this is a product that someone needs to buy, but there's no audio, you know, if, you're, if the description is not being read to them, they can't buy the product, they don't know what to buy. The simple fix is to describe it right here. So if I write flowers, the compliant computer, the screen reader, would read to the blind person flowers, which is way better than before, which had nothing. It didn't know what to say about it. What's better is bouquet, however you spell it, bouquet. Close enough. Bouquet of flowers. <laughs> Bouquet. Bouquet of flowers for $9.99. Okay, so that's explaining the image, but that it's a product and its price and all of that. So this is hidden for visual users but it's there for those non-sighted users and the search engine see that because it's just code the search engine cannot analyze that picture 
its dots of color, but it can easily analyze this text. So for every picture, yes, we should be doing this, and it seems like a lot of effort, but for these various reasons, it is worth it. Question? OK, so is that similar to the thing where you encode tags uh, on the image? Do you have any of those text fields that are capturing the tags? If I've seen it where you mouse over it, it shows you all of this stream of tags that somebody would do for SEO. That's a couple of, a couple of different answers there. Oh, OK. Uh, but we'll see that here. Uh, if you have tagged your images, usually something like in Photoshop, yeah, you've got tags embedded in the image. Oftentimes those tags will auto-populate here, but then they might not be the best uh, text to write here, because this alt text should be written as complete sentences, and not as just a collection of tags. So making the notes here, alt text should be complete sentences. Should make sense. So you can't just put Victor's Bakery chocolate chip cookies for nine ninety nine. That no, that that is fine because you've got the keyword Victor's Bakery, you've got nine ninety nine, you've got chocolate chip. So would you suggest that you put Victor's Bakery on all your photos? No, I wouldn't go that far. I would go uh, depending on the images. Uh, how can you explain what the image is to to a, a, a non visual user? Because as they visit my site and everything says Victor's Bakery cookie, Victor's Bakery hot chocolate, Victor's Bakery cupcakes, that's not helping anyone. It's the name of what the image is and then like any ancillary information about price and such, that's what's helping people. They know they're at Victor's Bakery. We don't have to put uh, my name onto it in all images because of that also that doesn't really help either for the search engines. The search engine will understand w the image and other things based on other factors. All text should make sense, not just keywords. Yes? Um, so the other text fields there, those are... Um, well, uh, uh, I'm going to get to them. Okay, they'll be viewable only if the design is... Well, each one's a little different. Uh, yeah? Hide ranges, right? Say, say you're going into somebody else's site, and they've called that uh, iStock125. And you want to be able to find it with a better search than having to remember something like that. So you would name it here, Hydrangea. Does that change the name of it the same as a rename would happen in a folder? No, the file name is going to remain the same always. This is just for the CMS. This is just for WordPress and the search engines for you to find your images when they're on the server. Uh, they're still going to be named with the exact file name as before. Is it? Is it? Smart to rename um, I'm about to talk about that too. I'll get to that one moment. Let's finish this screen here. So alt text is the one that is required that I would say. Everything else is optional, but I would fill it in for various reasons. Title is the text that appears when someone mouses over the image. So you see that often on websites. You put your mouse on an image, a little pop-up, a little tooltip appears. That's the title. It's perfectly fine to put alt text and title the same. One purpose is for one group of people, and another is for another group of people. So if you want anything to pop up, and it can be different, then you can do that. Maybe you simply want it to pop up with the price. That's fine. So you'll see that. $9.99 for the visual people, visual browsers. So that's like your attribute Attribute. Um, no, not quite. No. Uh, caption is text that will appear on screen below the image. So let's make the notes over here. Uh, title, caption. Alt text description optional uh, tooltip. That's a little bit of text that pops up when you put your mouse over it. Uh, mouse over caption optional text right below image visually on on screen right below the picture. You'll see that caption. Alt text, that's one we will say nowadays required for compliance. Only those that need to have that read to them or, or, or for uh, accessibility reasons 
uh, will have access to it, but uh, the search engines want you to do this one. In description optional, only for you in WordPress. Only for you in WordPress, meaning that you see how if we um, if we have something saved there, we've got um, the ability to search inside of your media library. Once I've got 5,000 images, what was that one picture again? Oh, I, I made a note on it so I can find the picture. You see here, I added cat. Cats. I added a, a, a description, I added a note to the image. I can find it myself in my library. This is not any purpose for the people browsing your website or SEO or anything. This is just internally for your you know, record keeping of your, of your content. So that's optional, but it's a way for you to keep, come back to it. These can all be the same, these can all be different. It's all being stored in the database. That database that we've got in PHE My Admin, all of that's in there. Oh, um, yeah, that's interesting. As soon as you make a change and you jump to another box, did you see that little rotating thing there? It automatically saves. You just have to remember, you know, get, get out of the box you were editing, and then it'll it'll save it. So that's weird here. Yeah, if you're still there and you close your whole site, it didn't save it. So it triggers once you move to another box. Or it should trigger. Let me try this. I'm going to add something and then I'm going to close the box. Yeah, it did save it. So it should close when you when you close this. It should save when you close the screen or go to your next photo. I guess the only reason it would not save is if you close your whole browser. But it should save as soon as you leave the box. Mm. Okay, one more thing, then we'll take a break here regarding file names and, and images. Um, let's say a note on file names. So I uploaded a file called hydrangeas.jpg. .j, .jpg. That's the name of the file, but you see here I changed all of these aspects of it in WordPress. That's perfectly fine. The original file name is intact, and I don't believe there's any way to change the file name in WordPress you would have to do it in the file manager. The problem there also is that there's different versions of it, so you still wouldn't change it there. So you're sort of stuck that your file name should be correct when you upload it, not after you upload it. I don't think there's an easy way to change file names after upload. So on the note here, we will say bad, better, best. Here's a bad file name, img underscore numbers jpeg. That's often the name of your images when it comes right out of your camera, just a sequential number. What's also very common is the date. You know, I, I see it on mine like image dash 2018 05 10 with the hour, you know, 1300 hours, uh, 22 seconds jpeg. So that's very, very common nowadays that you have a file name down to the second you shot it. Those are all bad. What's better is koala.jpg or uh, flowers-for-sale.jpg. Keywords also in your file name. That's better because the search engines look at that as well. And the search engines can't analyze and rank you with gibberish nonsense. Numbers are meaningless in the search engine. Koala has meaning, and flowers for sale has meaning. So that's better. Best is completely, I'm going to put it in quotes, because this is best me in what I've experienced in terms of um, usefulness. This is best in my case. Both. 
because this is what the image looks like after it comes out of your camera. If I rename it to this, and then I uh, put it on my website, and a year later, I need to go back to the original image that I resized and that I cropped and all of that. And I, as soon as I copy all of my photos off of the, off the memory stick and into my computer in my backups, I back them up on my hard drive, on my external hard drive at home with the original file name. Unless I also change the original file name on my external hard drive, I'm not going to find that file. I'm not going to find the original file. I renamed it. In my case, what has worked for me is to put the keywords that are important and leave the original file name as well. Then when I go search, when I go open up my computer window and go to my flash drive and go to my things right there, it has, I can do search inside of my flash drive and go find the file that is still with that original file name and go get the original raw version of the image, the original unedited version. So we'll see. I noticed you were using the dashes, like flowers, dashes for sale. When we're doing our alt text, do you also want to do dashes there? Or just space? In alt text, you want to write real sentences with spaces and capitalization and punctuation. So I have up here um, alt text, not just keywords, but complete sentences. Uh, so bad uh, because uh, meaningless names better keywords for search engines, for SEO. And this one is best for your bookkeeping, let's say. For your own records, when you need to go back to that original file, we've got the original name with the original date and all of that from your archives to go find it again. What were you talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, the capitalization? The capitalization was for uh, the question over here about alt text. And that's where you can have capitalization and spaces and periods and complete sentences. In a file name, you keep it simple, no spaces, no capitals, just dashes or underscores. Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So file names. Should only have letters, numbers, and then the dash or underscore. Anything else besides that might cause problems, and um, I would say also lowercase. Right, so we talked about uh, images and uh, we'll also cover a few more things about them as we use them but I just wanted to show you the WordPress media screen uh, you have some basic editing tools under the editor you have some important fields to fill in You've got more details uh, seems to be about the same and um, we've got the the link the URL, every one of your pictures has a, um, has a direct address, a permalink on your site. Let's take one more break. It's about 8.15. We'll take a break until 8.25, and then we'll come back and move on.